السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ تو ایوری ون بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوت الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علیہ سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفی محمد و آله الطیبین الطاہرین لا سیما بقیت اللہ فی الارضین اجل اللہ تعالی فرجه الشریف اللهم اخرجنی من ظلمات الوهم و اکرمنی بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا ابواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين الحمد لله we have توفيق to start the 11th term of Hujjat Academy this is a great توفيق that for 40 years we have been together journeying in this path of learning we started October 2016 right after Ashura and now Alhamdulillah we are together after four years to see the beauty of the journey we have made together some of you were there from the beginning when we started with mashallah 150 people and the registration had to close because the mosque didn't have capacity for more and Alhamdulillah this continued till today uh, we have uh, unfortunately no tawfiq to meet in person but uh, there is a blessing that can somehow reduce the pain and that is now we are able to have people from other parts of the community from different cities in the UK or other countries so we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us lots of tawfiq in every area of our life, especially for learning and sharing and practicing. In this term, as you already know, we are going to continue Islamic plan for life. We were uh, discussing some of the early units of or early uh, chapters of the first unit of Islamic plan for life which were about uh, values in our personal life so we'll continue that and inshallah then we will move on to social values and as uh, brother Mustafa mentioned uh, those who don't have the book Alhamdulillah the books are uh, order than they have come from the US to UK they are available with very discounted price so please make sure that you get your copy because we are going to use this for several semesters several terms and also it's good for you for your you know own use and if you want to teach in madrasa or other places so before it gets uh, you know too long please order your copy of Islamic plan for life the other topic that we are going to study is introduction to Nahjul Balaqa. Alhamdulillah, we have covered different topics, and one of the topics which we had was introduction to Sahifiyya Sajjadiyya. And now the Hujjat Academy team thought that it's a good time also to have introduction to Nahjul Balaqa. But we thought that there would be um, no uh, choice of a text better than ch choosing Ayatollah Mutahari's uh, Sayri Dar Nahjul Balaq, which is Alhamdulillah also available in English, and you have also access to it online, and you might have received also the PDF of it. You can also, you know, easily find your hard copy. So this is a very important topic that we are discussing in this semester in this term 11th term and inshallah i'm going to talk about it uh, soon just uh, after this uh, introduction so islamic plan for life and introduction to nahjul balaghe are our topics for this term bi'iznillah inshallah so now that we are all inshallah ready and hopefully everyone has been able to uh, tune in and plug in we start with introduction to Nahjul Balaghe 
Ayatollah Mutahhari has a very uh, personal and beautiful story to share with us in introduction to this book. And he says, imagine there is a person in your neighborhood that you have met many times. And sometimes you have formally, you know, greeted. Salam alaikum, how are you, you know, just this. Maybe sometimes you have met each other, for example, in the mosque, for example. But you don't know that much about that person. So somehow you know that person, but just superficially. You don't know that much. There's no personal acquaintance. And then something happens that because of some reason, you sit with that person a few times and you listen to that person and then you realize that this man is a very great man or this woman is a great woman for the sisters for example lots of knowledge experience taqwa and you feel that you are now discovering as if a new person you are entering into a new world so you could say I knew this person but also you are justified to say I didn't know this person <laughs> this is you know what uh, you know I also say about uh, Laylatul Qadr that we all go through Laylatul Qadr and we all have some information about Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr is the night that Quran is revealed in that night. Salamun hiya matla il fajr. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Mubarak. We know it's the last 10 days. We know it's, you know, in, a, in the odd nights. We know that it is either 19, 24. So we know something. It's not that we don't know about Laylatul Qadr. But how many people do a drag of Laylatul Qadr? How many people do shahood of Laylatul Qadr, witness Laylatul Qadr. That's another thing. So, sometimes we know someone or something, but very basic. Ayatollah Mutahari says, for me, Nahjul Balagh was like this. I knew Nahjul Balagh because from childhood, I had seen Nahjul Balagh among the books of my father. You know, his father was an alim, and very a spiritual alim. And Ayatollah Muttahari in some of his books refers to his father as his first teacher, but also as a very a spiritual person who was doing tahajjud, reciting Quran, you know. So he was influenced by his father. He says, I had seen from childhood Nahjul Balagh among the books of my father. Then I entered Hose. So as a Talabe, I had heard about Nahjul Balagh. And even I had listened to some speakers and some preachers, some khutaba talking about some sermons of Nahjul Balagh, especially about Zuhd about renunciation from dunya and even I had memorized some of those because we had heard them a lot but he says I was totally unaware of Nahjul Balagh I can say I knew almost nothing about Nahjul Balagh I can say that I discovered Nahjul Balagh after that so he says, in the year 1325, Hijri Shamsi, 1325, now it is 1399, so it's 74 years ago. Of course, he was martyred uh, 1358, so when he wrote this, it was... Uh, 33 years before his martyrdom. Sorry, the, I mean the story. He wrote it in the 50s, but the story was 
in 20s 1325 which is right now 74 years ago he says it was five years after my um, transition to Qum because he started first in Khurasan and then he moved to Qum so five years he has been in Qum already he had some study before he had heard about Nahj al uh, but he says Nahj al for me and many people like me was unknown and then something happened he said because Qom in summer was very hot so he decided to go to Isfahan and actually in some of uh, you know other places you know we know that he went with uh, Ayatollah Muntaziri to Isfahan because Ayatollah Muntaziri was uh, a close friend and you know they do mubahasa with each other and uh, he was from Najafabad, which is close to Isfahan. So they went to Isfahan. In Isfahan, there was a great alim. And first, he doesn't mention the name. Later, he talks about this alim. This alim was very knowledgeable in different fields. And he says that he was someone that was a mujtahid, was a deep expert in Arabic, you know, literature. He was a person that even was expert in medicine. And he used to teach, uh, you know, the book by Ibn Sina, Qanun, which is very difficult to be able to teach but he was very good in teaching Qanun, philosophy, different subjects, fiqh. And he says, but he was a free soul, <laughs> you can say. Nothing was able to arrest him and capture him. So no subject was capturing him, no topic was capturing him. The only difference or the only thing which was different was Nahjul Balagh. He says when he was teaching Nahjul Balagh, he was so passionate about it and so excited about it that he was going to another world. And he says when he was speaking and reading Nahjul Balagh, his tears used to come and he was somehow you know not paying attention to us who were there so he was so much taken by Nahjul Balagh and connected through Nahjul Balagh to Amirul Mu'min salam that he was not paying attention that much to us he says Bekhud jurat mi daham. He says, I dare saying that he really was alim rabbani. O be haqiqat yek alim rabbani. He was a godly scholar. But he says, I don't dare saying I was muta'allimun ala sabile najah. He is referring to one of the wise sayings of Nahjul al Balagh. Hikmate Sadu Chehelu Haft. Wise saying 147. You know, Nahjul al Balagh is divided into three parts. There are khutab, sermons, there are letters, rasail, and there are hikam, mawa'is, short sayings, wise sayings. So this is from last part. Amir al muni said to Kumail, Kumail ibn Ziyad al Nakhari, which is a beautiful hadith, part of it is this Anna Thusalatha, people are one of the three. Fa'alimun Rabbani, 
either they are godly scholar <coughs> number two wa muta'allamun ala sabil najah or learners who are on the path of salvation so they are not alim rabbani but they are learning from ulama rabbani they are connected to ulama rabbani benefiting from their knowledge and from their light so they are not them by themselves a rokn they are not by themselves a pillar but they are connected to pillars either you have to be a pillar or be connected to pillar otherwise winds and storms would force you go astray number 3 hamajun ra people who are not stationed people who are just uh, suspended in the air people that you know like you know some insects in the air every direction that a strong wind is coming can take them with lam yalja'u ila ruknin wathiq atba'u kull na'iq everyone who shouts everyone who cries harder they would follow everywhere pressure is coming they go by pressure they go by current they go by fashion by fame by name by advertisement so Ayatollah Mutahari says, I can, they're saying he was Alim Rabbani, it's high position. But he said, I cannot, they're saying I am Muta'allimun ala sabi. Ayatollah Mutahari with his knowledge and taqwa and services, he says, I cannot say I am Muta'allimun ala sabi li najah. And then he quotes this poem from Sa'di, Alimu. Zahid و Sufi همه تفلان رهند عالم زاهد و Sufi Those who have knowledge ascetic, Those who have ascetic lives And Sufis They are all children of this path تفلان رهند Mard agar hast bejuz alim rabbani nis. So all our children, if there is a man, a grown up a man, is alim rabbani, a godly scholar. So if someone is expert in some sciences, in some disciplines, even Islamic disciplines, just expert is alim, or zahid or sufi, they are still in, you know, beginning of journey. They are still children. But those who have grown up, they are ulama rabbani. So he says, this alim was alim rabbani. And then he says, he was one of those people that Amirul Mu'mineen in Khutbatul Muttaqeen describes. You know, Amir al-Mu'mineen in Khutbah Muttaqeen says, لَوْلَ الْآجَالُ الَّتِي كَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Or in some versions, لَوْلَ الْعَجَلُ الَّتِي كَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Had it not been that there are ajal, ajal is plural for ajal, deadlines that Allah has decided for them. So they have to leave till their ajal comes, deadline comes. Had it not been that there are ajal fixed for them, لم تستقر أرواحهم في أجسادهم طرفة عين their spirits would not remain in their bodies even for an eye blink شوقا إلى الثواب وخوفا من الإقاب because they are so much eager to see the reward that Allah has prepared for متقين and so worried thinking about the punishment for the criminals or عظم الخالق في أنفسهم فصغر ما دونه في أعينهم Allah the creator is great in their souls so anything other than Allah then is small in their eyes 
He says, I can say he was one of those people that Amir al-Mu'manin describes in this passage. And then he says, he was Haj Mirza Ali Agha Shirazi Isfahani. So Mirza Ali Agha Shirazi Isfahani was the teacher of Ayatollah Mutahari, especially in Nahjul Balagh. Maybe some people think Nahjul Balagh doesn't need teacher. Nahjul Balagh is something that everyone can study. Yes, everyone can study and benefit, but like Quran. Everyone should read the Quran, should reflect on the Quran, but you need teacher. And even to lab houses students, they need teacher for Nahjul Balagh. This man was teacher of Ayatollah Mutahari. Not when he was, for example, in early years only. For all his life, he considers him as his teacher. And he says, there is no day unless I remember him. Imagine how much impact this man must have had on the spirit and the heart of Ayatollah Mutahari. Every day I remember him. And he says, he was Mard Haq wa Haqiqat, man of truth and the true. Allah is the true. And the truth is whatever relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a person who had left his ego. And although he was great in his knowledge, he had felt responsible to talk to people, to lay people. Because some ulama, they only talk to the talaba, to the students, to scholars, to ulama only. Some ulama also feel responsible. I'm not judging, you know, because people are different and time, other things, you know, are different. But there are ulama that at the same time that they teach dars kharij or, you know, asfar, etc. in philosophy, they also talk to the lay people and teach lay people. They also use member as a means for teaching people and preaching people because they feel they cannot be just teaching talab. So he says this great man felt responsible to do irshad and hedaya to guide lay people. And his preaching was very effective because it was coming from his heart. And he says whenever he used to come to Qum, from Isfahan to Qum, great ulama of Qum were insisting on him to give member. And he says that uh, his members, his you know, sermons were very special, coming from heart and going to the heart. And he says he was avoiding leading jama'a prayer. He was giving member, but he was trying not to lead prayer, jama'a prayer. One month of Ramadan, they insisted a lot on him leading prayer in Isfahan. So in the Hosea, Madrasa Hosea of Sadr, he was leading the prayer and he was not coming regularly <laughs> because he was a free person and he didn't want to be committed to these routines and perhaps also he wanted you know to uh, make a kind of uh, reputation that people should not invite him for leading jama'a anyway although he was not coming regularly or you know sharp at time people were waiting for him and Little by little, other mosques were getting empty and everyone going to Madrasa Yassadr to say their prayer behind Mirza Ali Aghaye Isfahani Shirazi. And then when he saw this, he didn't continue because he didn't want other mosques to become empty. So he didn't continue. Ayatollah Mutahari says people in Isfahan knew him, ulama, and people also in Qom. 
but he did not want to have any kind of murid, any kind of you know students or you know disciples who are closely attached to him. He was trying to remain a free and independent person. Then he says, although this man <coughs> was very familiar with Nahjul Balaghe and his soul was connected to Nahjul Balaghe and Amirul Mu'mineen, he says, I don't claim that he had entered into all worlds of Nahjul Balaq. He had conquered all areas and territories of Nahjul Balaq, all the fields of Nahjul Balaq. He says certainly he was expert in many fields and aspects of Nahjul Balaq, but not all. And Nahjul Balaq had uh, somehow become embodied in him. But uh, still, we cannot say he knew everything about Nahjul Balagh. <coughs> because Nahjul Balagh has many dimensions. And we will, inshallah, refer to some of them. Zohd, Taqwa, Ibadah, Irfan, Wisdom, Philosophy, about politics, about social responsibilities. There are many, many things in Nahjul Balagh. So he says it's very unlikely that one person can conquer all these, you know, territories or areas of Nahjul Balak. And then he says, not only I was unfamiliar with Nahjul Balak, <coughs> sorry, and not only people like me, my you know friends or you know houses, you know students you know, like me, we were not that much familiar with Nahjul Balaghe. He says, unfortunately, our society is not very much familiar with Nahjul Balaghe. Yes, there are people who, you know, for example, used to read Nahjul Balaghe, even, you know, refer to Nahjul Balaghe in their khutbah. But to say that they are fully aware and informed about Nahjul Balaghe, no, that was not very common. And he says, very, of course, uh, uh, implicitly, that one of the things that you know invited some people to go back to Nahjul Balagh is that some people uh, who were not that much actually uh, believing in Islam uh, they try to refer to Nahjul Balagh to justify their ideas. He doesn't mention that much detail, but I think he's mentioning he's referring to people who had Marxist and socialist and communist approach because we had this phenomenon. In Iran and in Iraq, that some you know, Marxists they were saying Amir al was the first you know, <laughs> Marxist or the first socialist in the spirit, and you know Abu Zar and these type of people. So they try to refer to the sayings of Amir al about justice and about you know uh, the rights of the poor or the rich, etc., and saying that you look, you should follow Ali and become a Marxist or socialist or communist. Of course. I mean the spirit, although these names were new, but the spirit of it. And Ayatollah Matari says, this uh, brought Nahjul Balaghe to the forefront for some people. And of course, when they knew Nahjul Balaghe and Imam Ali, they were not going to become Marxist or communist. But those people uh, unknowingly somehow helped that Nahjul Balaghe becoming a center of attention. He says, we need to do different things about Nahjul Balagh. One is to go deep into the world of Nahjul Balagh, to the ocean of Nahjul Balagh. We should study the content of Nahjul Balagh very well. In a very scholarly way. The second thing is we need to work on the documentation of Nahjul Balak. Of course, when he wrote this, this is about you know 50 years ago, something like that. 
and he says alhamdulillah good projects have started and now we can say even more alhamdulillah because lots of work in these last decades alhamdulillah have been done in houses on Nahjul Balaghe and documenting Nahjul Balaghe all the sermons and also some of the things that Amirul Mu'mineen has said and they are not in Nahjul Balaghe as Ayatollah Mutahari mentions this later and we will inshallah talk about it so we need to do two things he says one to probe into Nahjul Balaghe explore this world and second documentation what you find in this book is a collection of papers that he wrote and they were published in a journal, Maktab Islam. There were two journals which were published in Qom before revolution and they were very influential. One was Maktab Tashayyo and Sheikh Rafsanjani and uh, some other students of Allah Metabatabai, uh, they were publishing that. One was Maktab Islam that Ayatollah Makaram Shirazi and Ayatollah Jafar Subhani and this kind of people were publishing in Qom. So Ayatollah Mutahari uh, wrote some papers about Nahjul Balaghe which were published in Maktab Islam in this journal in the year 1351-1352 means about 48-47 years ago so about seven six seven years before his martyrdom uh, he wrote these papers and then he decided to make them as a book also he gave five lectures in Husseiniya Arshad about Nahjul Balak and he says as I have called this Seiri, Seir means a journey. He says, this is just like a journey into the world of Nahjul Balaghe. I cannot say this is a research about Nahjul Balaghe. He says, I cannot say this is, you know, a comprehensive study of Nahjul Balaghe. No, it's just an introduction, a journey towards Nahjul Balaghe in the world of Nahjul Balaghe. And if we want to work, we need more time and we need a teamwork. Okay, this is the introduction to the book. And he ended this with a hope that he says, right now I am very busy and I don't know whether I would be able to finish at least the list of the topics that I mentioned in chapter three of this book. And he says, I don't know, I would get Tawfiq to do it or not, but I am very much hopeful. And then he signed it, and this was 3rd of Muharram, 1395, Qamari, and 1353, Shamsi. Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatan and may Allah inshallah resurrect him with Amirul Mu'mini alayhi salam. So after this introduction, we go now to the first chapter of the book and I think I give you a little introduction to the first chapter but might, might be better that we leave it for the next session because our time is already getting over and we don't want to rush as a preparation for next session in the first chapter he introduces Nahjul Balaghe in a general way and the one who compiled Nahjul Balaghe. Nahjul Balaghe was compiled by Sayyid al-Razi and Sayyid al-Razi about 1000 years ago at the beginning of the time of Ghaybat Kubra he compiled Nahjul Balagh, a brother of Sayyid Murtaba. He's not author of Nahjul Balagh because these words belong to Amirul Mumni, but he compiled, he put them together. And because he himself was a great adib, a great poet, we'll talk about him. He chose these 
sermons and letters and sayings of Amirul Mu'mineen as a collection of some very eloquent, you know, texts. And this is why he called it Nahjul Balagha. Nahj means path, way. Balagha means eloquence. He called it Nahjul Balagha. But he didn't put the Sanad, the chain of the narrators, and very rarely he mentions, for example, which book he took this from, because his focus was more on the literal side of it, about the eloquence of these things. But Amirul al has much more that have not come here, and also these are things which are all documented in other books. So Alhamdulillah, other people have worked on this, they have collected other things of Amirul Mu'mineen, and also they have documented Nahjul Balagha. So, but Sayyid Radhi gets the reward for being the first person who made this collection, and because of his position, uh, people respected and you know started reading and of course then everyone who reads falls in love but he has this you know role and you know we all you know are in debt to him that he invited us to the world of Nahjul Balagh or sayings of Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam so then Ayatollah Mutahari talks about some other books on sayings of Amirul Mu'minin and about the adabi and eloquent nature of Nahjul Balaghe, he quotes from people like Ibn Abbas, what they said about Amirul Mu'mineen, and comes to Al Jahiz, etc., Ibn Abil Hadid, up to some contemporary scholars, even some Sunni scholars like Abdu, like Taha Hussein, some Christians. So the first chapter is more about. Uh, Sayyid al-Razi and the reason for choosing these uh, sayings and sermons and the adabi side of it, the eloquence of Nahjul Balagha. Inshallah we will discuss this in the next session. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.